Hi, this is Mark Weitzman. Welcome back to my um, YouTube channel. And um, today I want to uh, do the uh, weekly blog. And it's sort of becoming a bi-weekly blog. I've been very busy. Uh, the market's been um, much better this year so far. I think I've gotten about back about 40% of my losses from last year. So um, in terms of physics, I've decided to take a, a few week break from quantum field theory. I got deep into Coleman's book and when we got to the, um, the SU3 and the particle physics, I felt I needed to review a little bit of the quark model and everything. And this goes back a long way for me. So um, one thing I started with was um, they used to have um, subtitles on the top next to like Piazza PH200. Now they just have this dash thing. So if you click on that and then click on the resources, you get to this page. And then on my, um, you know, you can go down. And um, one of the things I have on that is, um, well, let me just show you. This is available on the internet. I'm not sure it's an authorized copy. It's a uh, old copy of um, Quarks and Leptons by Hazel and Martin, one of the um, sort of easier books that I used at Caltech. We, we also went deeper, as I'll explain in a second. But it's, it's a good book on um, particle physics, even though it's 1984. It's still, um, most of it's still okay. And there are better books nowadays, but I really like the pedagogy in this. And chapter two was on symmetries and quarks. So um, this is chapter two from that book. And so you can get it off my site. And it just reviews the whole quark model, but it goes pretty fast. And um, sort of at like the junior, senior, undergraduate level. And... Um, you know, it does SU2 first and then SU3. And it, and it does sort of decompositions, you know, it gives a real brief treatment of SU3 with the U spin, the V spin, and the T spin or I spin. And, um, you know, you have all these decouplets and hyper, hypercharge and isospin. And... Um, it sort of does it in a simple way without doing the math, but it's, it's useful to know the math. And um, has a lot of exercises in there to give you practice on getting these uh, barons and meson things. This is kind of like old-fashioned stuff because SU3 really flavor symmetry for quarks is just coincidence that the masses of the light quarks are about the same. For the U and D, it's very good. They're almost the same. That's why the proton and the neutron practically have the same mass. But when you start going to the strange quark, it gets a little worse. And then when you go to the charm quark, for SU4, it gets even more. But still, there was a lot done with magnetic moments and um, Gelman mass formulas and things like that. So this is useful to review. Um, and that's what I've been doing the last week. Now... Um, there's another book, I don't think I have a PDF of this online, but this is also a good book in the series by Greiner or Greener um, on um, quantum mechanics symmetries. And they cover all this stuff as well. And It's kind of like a disorganized book on symmetries, but it has some very good chapters where it has the SU3 symmetry treated and quarks in SU3. And it really shows you, like, has examples where they give you the complete wave function for a proton and a neutron. It's got, like, a zillion terms in it. And then they extend it to charm and SU4. So this is another alternative treatment on symmetries. You know, usually I cite the, my three main books for group theory are Tung, 1984, um, and uh, Z. His recent book, which I'm making notes on, is very is the best book that I would start with. And this old book by Shinested, um, which really does, does the math and derives everything that these other books just tell you the rules. So um, if you go to another book that I highly recommend, and, and it just came out when I was at Caltech, 
we were encouraged to um, cover it was a book called, if you go at the bottom of the list, it's freely available, you can download it, Gauge Theories of Elementary Particle Physics. You know, if you click on that link at the very bottom, Gauge Theory, Chang and Lee, you know, their book, and you can download it for free or just read it online. And um, here, this book has a, um, well, it has a chapter. This is the PDF when you download it. It's a very advanced book in some ways. It assumes you sort of know quantum field theory and everything, but like the first three chapters are sort of like a summary of quantum field theory and various things. But chapter four is a good standalone chapter on group theory and the quark model. And that's what I've sort of been reading through this week to refresh my memory. Uh, let me get to page 86. Yeah, this is the quark model. And they, it's like it's a lightning review of everything. They don't prove anything, but they just state things. And they... Um, they do the groups and the Lie algebra, and then they do SU2 explicitly, which everybody who's had quantum mechanics has done in addition to angular momentum. And then they do like um, SU3 as well. Um, and the representations and the Gelman matrices and those operators, the, the T and the U and the V, to go up and down through the thing through the um, descriptions of the um, octets and mesons and barons, uh, the, the 10 representations and so on. And then this is all done in the uh, book Quantum Mechanics Symmetries in Details where you do these things and you can prove things on the dimension of the representations and everything, you know, decouplet, octet. And um, then it goes through the tensor method which Z covers fairly well, and uh, Young Tableau, which Z doesn't cover, this sort of gives you how to get direct products and dimensions and everything, but it doesn't prove anything. It does show you how to use it. It's worthwhile. This is all very worthwhile to know um, if you want to derive certain things. Then it goes through the whole quark model, um, you know, SU2, SU3, hypercharged, the particles and everything. So um, I recommend this chapter in Chang and Lee, what's a fairly advanced book. Um, if you're interested, have any interest in the, in the quark model. Um, you can also go to the uh, particle data group, the review of particle physics. You know, you can get free books on here, um, you know, where you can download them. You know, you can get the whole thing. But if you go to like to the topical index, you can look on all these topical indexes. And for instance, if you go to mathematical tools, you'll see um, something on SUN multiplets and Young's diagram. You get a brief treatment, like three pages. But um, I wonder how I get rid of this. I guess I click that. But if you go back, if you look at like the standard model and related topics, they have the uh, quark model. And they have like, this is like the latest version of the quark model. Uh, well, it was like 2021. And it has a lot of detail on all the quark quantum numbers and the classifications. And you see these four dimensional diagrams for SU4, which includes charm. And um, you, know, you can get the whole quark model. There were books written on the quark model. I remember, I think Frank Close had a whole textbook is published in 79 on the quark model. Like I said, nowadays this is like old stuff, but it's still useful to know and get the whole thing. And, um, and they have like, um, so they have a lot of detail here on the quark model, if you're interested. On the particle data group, this is like the latest, you know, will it, they'll have everything. Um, magnetic moments and everything. And then even they'll talk about lattice 
gauge calculations. And um, so this is quite useful. I think, um, yeah, you can even get like, you know, they have all kinds of things on in this book, which is available for free. You can get the whole copy. It's a thick book, you know. And uh, you know, just to show you how thick it is. They also have a small, they always have small like summaries, little things that you can carry. You know, this is, I have the, uh, this was an old version, but they always have small things like that. You can get all of this for free. Um, but here you see how you can do like the whole lattice QCD, you know. There are of course books, a lot of textbooks written. Something I want to um, get into one of these days more than I have on lattice QCD. So um, that's what I've been doing this week, uh, a little break from quantum field theory. Um, I have to start updating my lecture, my uh, online lectures in the course on quantum field theory and also on my putting together a course on group theory. Um, like I have three lectures, I think, up on, on group theory, but I'm going to eventually have a separate site and um, I think this is my playlist. Well, that was my old playlist, which I'm redoing. And, um, well, somewhere I probably should put a new link on. Um, but I have a lot of resources on group theory and physics. If you want recommended textbooks and everything. So um, that's all I have for this week. And... Um, as, as I, uh, been a tough year, you know, involved with a lot of different things. I've got taxes coming up. I've got, um, various, uh, various other things that I'm working on. So the physics is not always the uh, highest priority, but at least I have no, um, MOOCs going on. And, um, by the way, there is this MOOC that I found, which, um, it's a it's sort of a self-paced MOOC, and it's called um, Advanced Statistical Physics. It's given by a French school, um, and uh, if you're interested in um, EPFL, Advanced Statistics, it's given on edX, and if you're interested in things like Brownian motion, stochastic processes, Fokker-Planck equation, Levy flights, quantum optics, uh, this might be a good course for you. It has some videos, they're hard to understand, and it has a lot of textual material as well. But uh, it's an advanced course, but you probably should have had a statistical mechanics course before you attempt this. Anyway, that's all I have for today, this week. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.